move to our next learning plan, which is learning plan number five, looking at patterns, okay, patterns. Now, patterns in our book correspond to actually chapter six. So learning plan five, chapter six, okay? Now, there are some uh, lecture videos out there and I'm gonna populate these as well. Feel free to watch those. Those would have been from um, like last year, previous edition, but that's okay. They're still valid and all that kind of stuff. So feel free to do that. Learning plan five homework is gonna be in the um, folder that you see here. There's gonna be a couple tutorials that you're gonna do to practice. And then there are some um, drawings here as well. Wanna remind you that in this unit, do not look to the end of the chapter six for these problems. Some of them are gonna be similar, but use this handout because there are some that are different. So use the handout corresponds to our homework problems. So, um, so let's look first though, at um, the chapter. So I'm going to go underneath my document camera and open up to page 155, which is the chapter where, um, where patterns start, okay? So you'll notice here that at the beginning they talk about kind of like the definition of patterns. And a pattern is gonna be anything that we notice is kind of in an even like increment and there's a number of them. So sometimes a both pattern on you know, a pulley, for instance, or you might have an array of holes that might be in a plate, okay, that have like the same amount of rows and columns going across, and, and you can make them a little bit more efficiently rather than one at a time, we can make them with patterns, okay? So it's like we can generate, and it, there's a lot of power in this and, and, and um, time savings. Now, the first part of the chapter focuses on arrays that are like column and rows, okay? I'm gonna actually start on the second tutorial that they have here because that one's gonna to apply to actually, I think more of the homework problems that you have, but I think it's also the easier one to learn first. So, so I'm doing them a little bit different order than what the, the book presents. So on page 170 is where we're seeing axial patterns, okay? So this is, this is pattern practice using axial patterns. An axial pattern is going to be on most often a circular part, but it's going to be holes that are, I like to say like are in a bold pattern, or they're gonna be a feature that is going to be, you know, like rotating in a polar sense around an axis, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at this 72 tooth saw blade, okay? Now I, th I know it's kind of hard to see, especially um, you know, on the video here. But if you look in your book, you can see this is a saw blade and they've, it's got notches out, but then there's also like larger notches in between here. So because this is a saw blade, it's even increments all the way around, we're gonna generate and, and draw one of those teeth. And then we're gonna use our axial, um, our axial pattern to go around the center, okay, for the number that we want. So that's what I'm gonna introduce for you today. Now you will be going through this tutorial step-by-step step. and what I did to save a little bit of time is I drew the profile, the solid disc profile of my um, saw blade. So here is the, the dimensions and the, um, the geometry to revolve around the center. So there's gonna be a center hole here and then you're gonna create the actual disc, if you would, that then we're gonna draw on. So I've already done that. So I'm going to um, just kind of show you in SolidWorks here, or I'm, I'm sorry, not SolidWorks, in Creo, I already drew the disc, if you would, of this saw blade before it has any teeth on it. So where I'm gonna start, which is gonna be most applicable to the pattern, is going to be on a page 172, and it's going to be step number 20. Okay, step number 20. So I'll get back underneath there so you see exactly where I'm at. So I'm here on page 172. I have drawn my disc, no teeth yet, and now we're gonna start on step 20. Okay, step 20. Now what we're gonna do here is we are actually going to go in and we're gonna sketch, and then we're gonna select that sketch and do an extrude. So instead of going in on an extrude, we're gonna go in on a sketch. It's, it's kind of a horse apiece, honestly, but they're doing it this way, so I'll follow along with their steps. So I'm gonna kind of go back and forth here to um, you know, reorient ourselves. So again, we could go in underneath the extrude if we wanted to, if we know we're gonna be extruding, but 
we'll go in under sketch. So sketch is right here to the left of extrude. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on that and it's going to want to know where do we want to, you know, where do we, where do we want to like you uh, create our geometry or our sketch on? So we're going to go on this front plane right here. Okay. And we're going to say sketch and it's going to automatically orient it. If it doesn't, then make sure you do your sketch view here up in our um, toolbar. Okay. Cause you want to be like looking straight on. All right. Now I'm going to kind of zoom in here and I'm going to do shift, press down on my middle mouse button, which is the roller. I'm going to kind of come down in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a construction line at an angle. Okay. Actually two of them. And those are going to be part of what I use for my geometry or guidance for it. Now, I am not using the datum center line because I'm not revolving around it. I'm going over to the right. This is the construction center line. Okay, so it's in the sketching area. It's that one. So I'm going to hit center line. I'm going to select on the center here. And then I'm just going to draw it at an angle. Okay, and I'm just going to click. And, um, and then I'm just going to hit my middle mouse button and you'll notice that it's gonna automatically dimension it for me. I'm gonna click on that dimension and I want that to be an even 20 degrees, okay? Then I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna go back up to center line here, through that center again and a little bit taller, okay, above that. And this one, I want this angle to be between, this is gonna be five degrees between here. So I have to go to the dimension and I've got to go from here to here. This is going to be five degrees, five degrees. There we go. Okay. So those are my reference dimensions right now. Okay. So, or my reference uh, center lines. So let's take a peek at uh, where we're at here. So I am, I drew my center line. I have it, I have it right uh, here, pay, uh, step number 25. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to reference those two um, center lines, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm, not, I'm gonna reference the outside diameter. So I, I'm gonna use these to construct. So I'm gonna go up here over on the, up in the upper right-hand corner. Now, if you're watching this on the replay, I'm kind of up there right now, okay? So it's underneath, it's gonna be underneath the um, sketch setup immediately below it is references okay so we're going to click on references and what's going to happen now is it's going to um, you know identify two things that are references here and what we want to do is we want to reference wait a second i'm sorry I'm trying to figure out stretch we want to reference that outside diameter yeah the outside diameter right here there we go. And we're going to say close. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we are going to draw, we are going to draw our little triangle that we see at the top of page 173. So um, we are going to draw a line and it's going to come right from here and then it's going to go in. We're going to do to this intersection right here. And then we're just going to leave it there. We're going to leave the, the radius open. If we draw a line back up to the point, it's going to be a straight line. And what we need to do right now is project the radius here. And then enter. Now, that radius on the outside now, we projected. It projected the full circle going all the way around. I'm sorry, only half circle up until the plane. And what we need to do is we only want this section that's right in the middle here. So we are going to delete the segment above and below. And then, oops, we might have to do one more down below the center line here. And if I, let me go shift, move. Okay, it looks like all those orange parts are away. So I just, what I want left over is just this like two sides of a triangle, but then part of that radius, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit my middle mouse button. I have a closed section now. Now the dimension I need to add here is going to be between this surface and my reference center line, and that needs to be 55 degrees, okay? So we've got these two lines here, and then we've got this radius right here. The purpose of the reference earlier was so that we could grab an intersection point here and here. If we, if we didn't have that, it would only go along, along the construction line. So that's why we referenced that radius initially. 
Okay, so now we have this in place and this is going to be the um, portion that we're gonna extrude and then do the pattern around for our tooth. So I'm gonna check to see if my feature requirements are good and I'm, I'm ready to then, then exit this sketch. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now remember, we didn't go in on an extrude, so it doesn't know to extrude. So it's just sitting out here as a sketch on that surface. So with this sketch one highlighted, we're now going to hit the extrude button. Now you might say, why didn't we do that earlier? I don't know why the book didn't do it. I think it's just to let you know that you don't have to do it, okay? So um, I would have normally probably gone in on the extrude. Now, as I use my middle roller mouse button here, you'll notice that it's extruding out. I just, I actually want it to cut. So I'm gonna remove material, but it doesn't know to go through the thickness. So I'm gonna use the toggle to reverse the direction here. Additionally, I'm gonna change this from a thickness of 0.296 to through all. So that in case I ever have a thickness change on the saw blade itself, it's, it's always gonna be through. All right, so this looks good. This looks good. And as I look at it, there, there it is. Okay, cool. So I've got one tooth, one tooth in place here. I'm gonna bring this to the middle. Okay. All right, I've got one tooth. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take that one tooth and this is gonna be my pattern around the outside. I need 72 teeth to go around. So I am going to have extrude one highlighted and or activated. I'm gonna go into pattern. I'm just gonna click that pattern. Now, up in the upper left-hand corner, again, below where I'm at, right now by default, it goes in and it's a dimension, which is like a rectangular array uh, pattern, okay? That's the default on the top. But there's a little triangle in the lower right-hand corner of that like little icon, and I'm gonna depress that, and I'm gonna select underneath there is the axis, the axis, and this is gonna be the axis pattern. Okay, now the first thing that we need to identify with an axis pattern is, well, what is the, what is the axis that you want to uh, revolve around? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom, zoom, zoom in here. And we wanna go around the, the Z axis in this case, all right? Now, when you went in and you created the um, disc, if you would, of the saw, if you didn't select the exact planes that they did, you might have a different um, axis in and out here, okay? But we want the axis that's gonna go through the hole, and mine is consistent with the book, it's the Z axis, okay? So once we have that selected, if you don't have that selected, this stuff is not gonna become available. They want you to first identify what's the axis that we're summing around, or summing around, but generating our, our, our array around. And so you have to do that first. If you don't, this stuff is gonna be grayed out. You're gonna wonder why I can't I put my numbers in, okay? So now I'm gonna zoom out and you'll notice that right now there's these yellow dots, okay? And from where my extrusion was, it's kind of taking the center of that. And, it, and by default, it says, oh, there's gonna be four members in there, okay? That's just by default. So now I'm gonna put 72 in here because we want 72 teeth. So this is gonna be 72. Okay, and then it's asking me for the angle between them. All right, angle between them. I don't want it to be 90. I need that angle to be, should be up on the top, five degrees, five degrees. Five, enter. Now, once I hit enter, it's gonna give me a preview of not, it just, you don't see each one of the, um, each one of the, the saw teeth, but you see the instances that they're gonna create. So we can see around here, it's gonna be continuous circle all the way around, it looks good. And then I can hit okay. And when it does that, then it generates the geometry. And now I've got 72 saw teeth in here, okay? Very efficient, very efficient and, and time saving to do that. Now, besides that, I also need to put in like my little like cutouts, okay? There was these little circular cutouts. So if we look back at, the, um, the picture, not only do we have the saw, we see the saw teeth on here, but we also have these little notches that are kind of like these half circle notches that are out here in increments as well. Okay, and I'm sure you've seen those on other, other saw teeth. Okay, so we need to add those two. So we're not quite done, but we've experienced kind of doing that axial pattern. So we're gonna do another axial pattern. 
And I'm going to kind of catch myself up here again. And we are currently on, we are currently on step number 38 on page 174. Step number 38 on page 174. We're going to go back in and we're going to do another sketch. Again, you could go in on an extrude, but we're going to do what the book is doing and we're going to go in on a sketch. So we're going to sketch and the plane I'm going to sketch on is that, that uh, face of our saw. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to sketch on that. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom in over here and we are going to go to one of the teeth here. So I think it's the, I think the one that I want a little bit up. I believe it's this one right here. So I am going to zoom in. We're going to use this, this tooth right here. I just need to get my book a little bit closer. And we're going to generate the radius then that's coming around. So I've got, Okay, so we're going to first, so we are going to reference first, and referencing just makes it allowable for me to drop points. So I'm going to hit that reference command up in the upper left-hand corner again, and I am going to reference this one and this one. Because what I need to do is I need to extend lines past those points and it'll make a little bit more sense in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna reference this edge, this edge, this edge, and that edge, just to have those points in there for reference. And I'm gonna hit close. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a radius over here. But before I do that, I need to draw a straight line through those points. So I'm going to start here on that point. I'm just going to go just beyond it, all right? Just doesn't really matter. It just needs to be on that line just a little bit beyond it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from here, and it is not a horizontal line. I don't want it, I don't want it like attached to anything, and I don't want it to be like constrained. So I'm going to just draw it like a random line like this. Even though it looks horizontal in the book, resist that urge. There's no horizontal constraint on there, okay? So I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> All, right. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to add a radius right here. Okay. So I'm going to do that through my fillet on my sketch. And I'm going to click here, here, and it automatically put a radius in there for me. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the size of that radius. And the size of that radius is 0 0.120. Okay, enter. And I'm also going to add my angle. My angle, if you look in the book, is 25 degrees. So I'm going to do a dimension. I'm going to go on the line that I drew and the other line. And I'm going to middle mouse button out over here. And this is going to be 25. Done. Okay, now I'm fully constrained on the 25 degrees and that radius, right? And that's that portion. Now, the last part of this is I'm going to add a radius here to close this section. Otherwise, it's open right now and I can't extrude it. So I need to close this section and I'm going to add a three point arc, which is the on the arc command. It is the uh, default that you come in when you open a session. So now I'm going to go on this point. I'm going to go on this point. I think, oh, good. So you have to do top, bottom, and then the middle. And you want to make sure that you get to the end point right here. There we go. It's like I'm on like an angle. Oof, I don't like that. Okay, so now those are there. When I middle mouse button, you should get a pink enclosed section like this. If you don't, then you don't have things lined up quite right. And that's why the references that are there are important. Okay, by doing that, I now check my feature re uh, requirements. I'm good, I've got all green check marks. I'm ready to now go outside of my sketch. Okay, so I've got that sketch there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extrude that. So sketch two highlighted, I'm gonna extrude. I'm going to remove material and I'm gonna switch the direction and I want it to be a through all, through all. Okay, that looks good. That looks good, so I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so now what I'm gonna do with 
this extrude, extrude number two highlighted now, I'm gonna put them in the increments around the outside. Now it's not gonna be 72 this time. There's only gonna be, I gotta look ahead over many there, there needs to be six or eight or 12 or something like that, okay? 12, it's 12. So I'm gonna go up to my pattern. I'm going to select underneath the dimension. I'm gonna select axis, okay? And that's there. Now, I need to, again, first thing, now notice that these portions are grayed out right now and it, select, it says select one item. And it's not always really clear. It's like, well, but if you look down here, we don't always look here. I'm gonna call it the command line because the command line is what it is in AutoCAD and it's kind of down in that same spot. So, um, so what we're gonna do is we need to identify the axis that we're going to be generating our pattern around. And that is gonna be the axis moving through that hole which is the Z axis, okay? Once I select that, now notice up here, it activates the, um, the number of members in my pattern, which is gonna be 12. And then the angle between them, I think it's gonna be 30. Yeah, there we go. Now, it doesn't give you a preview of the actual geometry, but it's showing you the dots where they're, where they're gonna be located and that looks, looks good. So I'm gonna hit okay. After that, it's gonna generate now the geometry. Well, is that, okay? So um, I wanted to show you this one first because I think this is the easier one to do, quite honestly, all right? And what I want you now to look towards is in the homework, in the homework, uh, the problems that we have, majority of them are gonna be axial patterns, okay? So this helps you to kind of practice this right away before we kind of move into the other ones. So tomorrow, what I'm planning on doing is I have the handout already um, printed. If you wanna use the handout, remember, do not use the at the end of the chapter. Unfortunately, like I said, they just, they, they did it like a switcheroo on me, all right? And you'll notice that the first problem here, it's not the same, it's not the same. So I just wanna stay consistent with what we had before because I've got some other videos out there that you can also um, look at. So we're going to keep this consistent with our, our previous version. So I just made copies of just the homework assignments. So the ones that you're going to be doing for me are going to be one and two, one and two. And those are axial patterns, okay? You're going to be doing number three and number four, or no, I don't, yeah, you do. You do number three and four. Those are also axial patterns, so you'd be ready for this. So you, so really, the form of each one of these is number one. You're gonna you're gonna revolve the actual like profile first, and then the axial pattern is gonna be on any of the holes, the hole patterns that you see here. Then you're gonna be doing the heat sink for me, which is number five. Skipping over number six, you don't need to do that one. Then you're gonna be doing the drawer cabinet. Those are the two, those last two that we just looked at, those are the two rectangular arrays or the dimension arrays. So we're not doing number eight, but then you will do for me number nine and number 10, okay? And these two are repeats of um, parts at the beginning that now are gonna be in metric and millimeters instead of in English units. So you get to, you get to do them again, all right? So quite a few there, but, they kind of, the, the round ones, okay, that are the axial, they all are gonna have a revolve first for their profile. And then you're gonna use the axis um, pattern to put in the bolt circles, okay? So again, don't look here because there are some, some are the same, but not all of them, not all of them. I don't want you to do work that you don't need to do. So make sure you reference this handout. So tomorrow what I'm gonna do is I will demonstrate a couple of these um, axis uh, patterns to um, you know, to make sure that you you know feel comfortable with them and get you some get you some uh, practice there, and then we'll move on to the dimension patterns on Wednesday. Okay, so we'll kind of we'll kind of like I said, kind of take this in little chunks here. I believe that the axis one is just a little bit easier to understand. Let's get that one underneath our belt, comfortable, and then we'll move on to the um, the dimension one. Okay, any questions? So that's all that I have for you today. So start by doing the tutorial here, step-by-step step, like they do through the book. You're gonna to have to revolve the profile first and then put the, um, the, the teeth in with the um, pattern uh, function. Okay, so I am gonna stop sharing.
I'm going to stop recording.